thank you, uh, Senator Warren. Uh, Senator, uh, Senator Haggerty from Tennessee is recognized. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, and welcome to our guest today. Over the past year, we've seen the blatant disregard of a nation's sovereignty by Russia's brutal invasion of Ukraine. And right here in the United States, we've seen an invasion of our own sovereignty as a CCP spy balloon was allowed to float over our nation for a number of days, including over sensitive military sites in my home state of Tennessee. In the case of Russia, I was pleased to see the administration apply sanctions to key Russian sectors, such as its finance and energy sectors, sectors which were used to fuel Russia's aggression in Ukraine. In contrast, China has simply received a slap on the wrist at best for its complete and illegal violation of our U.S. sovereignty. To date, only six, again, just six entities from China have been added to the Department of Commerce's inter in entity list, and zero sanctions have been applied to the PLA, to the state-owned enterprises, and to the other entities that supported developing this balloon and its payload. It's well known that China's space sector writ large is entirely administered by, or at least works in close coordination with the CCP's People Liberation Army. If that isn't damning enough, the administration was forced to sanction a Chinese space entity, Space City, for providing support to the Russian military. I'd note that if you just took a look at Space City's website, you'll see that they directly partner with China's nuclear weapons manufacturers, their defense universities, and the state-owned enterprises that directly support the PLA. So Mr. Singh, my first question is for you. Do you believe that the administration should be doing more to hold the People's Republic of China, to, to include its space sector, accountable for violating our sovereignty and our national security? And I appreciate a yes or no answer, please. Senator, I'll, I'll be concise. I mean, to the extent we have evidence of which entities were involved with the violation of our sovereignty, we have uh, any number of tools that we can consider deploying. Should we do more? I've not seen the forensics, but we certainly have the capacity. I think it's clear to the American public the warnings needed to be done. Mr. Singh, I'll stay with you on this. You're one of the chief architects of the economic sanctions imposed by the U.S. on Russia, as Senator Warren just highlighted. Under what conditions would you recommend that this administration consider sectoral sanctions against other adversaries like the People's Republic of China? Senator, so the, the conversation about what tools to use has to start with the strategy. What's the objective? So for any target, the question is, are we trying to deter an activity? Are we trying to impose maximal costs? Are we trying to degrade their ability to project power? Are we trying to create a demonstration effect? Once we've identified our objective and our strategy, then we get into a discussion about tools. And different tools take advantage of our strengths uh, than others. And we have to think about this in terms of a multiplayer repeated game. We have moves we can make, so do our adversaries. The kind of analysis that I think is needed is to simulate how a conflict scenario plays out. Mm -hmm. How do we use economic statecraft? How do we use our military, uh, our military channels? What kinds of diplomatic avenues are, are available? And it's looking at the totality of the options available to us that will, I think, guide, should guide, the way in which we approach targeting I, countries like, like Russia. I, I understand that. Uh, my interest is right now in the People's Republic of China, though. You've been aggressive with respect to Russia and the, the sanctions applied there. I certainly encourage you to take a damn hard look at what the PRC is doing, particularly after they violated our sovereignty as they have. Mr. Wolf, I want to turn to you. The question is, being that you're the only witness here today that's worked at BIS, do you think it's appropriate for this administration to allow U.S. technologies to be exported to China technologies that advance the People's Liberation Army's military modernization efforts, including its near space and its space programs? Uh, no, um, of course. Uh, there, there's been a comprehensive embargo on um, the export of such items to China for decades. And with respect to um, uh, otherwise commercial civil items, that's actually sort of at the essence of my testimony to increase the effectiveness of the concern you're describing. Uh, to get items that are made outside the U.S. without U.S. technology uh, subject to comparable controls for the same reasons. How would you suggest that BIS step it up and stop the flow of technology that's going to China right now? One, it's the regular investigation that's described to the mm -hmm. parties that you're referring to and using the entity list aggressively uh, once the evidence is identified of somebody providing support to what you've just described. And second, I think more importantly, since the U.S. doesn't have a monopoly on the inputs that are needed for that activity, uh, is to continue working with the allies to share information, evidence, declassified intelligence, so that they understand and share the same threat 
and more importantly, have the legal authorities under their systems in order to be able to impose controls from their countries over their items. And that will dramatically enhance the effectiveness of the concern you rightly point out. Got it. Thank you, Mr. Wolf. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.